Hi guys, it's a beautiful day once again and welcome back to Dexter's World Channel. I'm so happy to let you see about the development of our fish farm here and you will see that our breeding of this tropical fish have been so well that we were able now to produce some of the quality fish that are here and we are actually on the process now of selecting all those that have beautiful colors and body configurations and we're gonna throw this in the mud pan. Another thing is, this is the schedule of our harvest of this baby koi. And we will throw them in the mud pan. And then another activity that we're gonna show you today is the actual visit to my friend's house. His name is Richard Pasqua. He's been a goldfish hobbyist actually and a known breeder here in our, in our community. He gonna share with us some good lines of breeders that will help us improve the quality of our fish. In breeding these types of fish, we have to upgrade once in a while. It's in the upgrading of lines that we can produce some good quality and some good mutations out of you know cross breeding and mixed breeding. And uh, this is actually my passion, and I've been backed up with several people who are also fish enthusiasts here in our community. And it's our desire to make an open competition about this and inspire people to groom their fish and join with us in our dream to have fun among the hobbyists. So guys, we're now transferring our fingerlings of just Japanese koi and the intention is actually to put them in the mud pond because we will grow them and as you know, we tried our best to maximize our production in a short period of time. That's why we decided to open additional mud pond in order for us to fast track the business. And as you know, we have this pet store where we sell all these types of fish and we are breeding them in order for us to ensure maximum profitability. You will see here that these are only less than a month old koi and they are now suitable for the transfer to the mud pan. In fact, I have here some that are really very best to collect. You know, in breeding this koi, you cannot always be sure that you can get plenty of this uh, quality because majority of them having issues on the colors, color pattern, color combination, and even the body configuration is uh, really not best. But you can select at least 10% of them, like this one, this is a pure platinum. And maybe you will wonder why this has uh, several colors because we're crossing the platinum and the 
the Yamabaki Koi. You know, in koi business, uh, there are a lot of processes. You can become successful if you will invest something, you know, about these uh, tanks. Actually, I have here several tanks. These are concrete tanks for breeding and for conditioning. But the grow-out tank should be big. At the mud pond, we have there some five big mud ponds that measures around 30 meters by you know 10 meters and this is uh, good enough for 5,000 coins and our experience about this is very challenging challenging in the sense that although we don't need a very large amount of money but it entails much of your time your attention and your effort because if you're gonna breed single pair of this Japanese koi it gives us many offsprings in fact if you are breeding this uh, big koi, it can give you more than 40 to 50,000 fry in just one spawning. That's why I said it's challenging because it really has to require something from you, your attention and I, I mean not, not all persons can breed or not all persons can become successful in breeding. You may be able to breed, you may be able to you know spawn the eggs but the success is not actually focus on the ability to spawn but the ability to grow and sell our products to the market. So we are here guys at the house of my friend Richard and we are about to get all the fish that he's gonna share with us. I'm so excited about this one because this is not an ordinary line. This is not an ordinary goldfish that you can see in the market. Actually, these are special lines that can even compete to international competitions of goldfish. You will see this. We will place this inside in our aquarium and we will condition them 
this is gonna be an exciting thing to watch for those of you out there who are in a hobbyist of this goldfish you will witness how we're gonna you know breed this one and be able to produce some fry for our future grow out competition so this is it see that and this is the female this is the male wow and uh, they are about actually to breed because you look at the tummy it's so big Finally guys, I got another strain of goldfish and this will ensure that we can produce now good lines of goldfish. Actually these are barbarian lines and shout out to the owner of this Mr. Richard Pasqua for uh, sharing with us this kind of goldfish. This is actually big. This is a, a jumbo line goldfish that can grow very fast if they will just be given correct environment this uh, big pond and this will grow very fast because the genes of this are jumbo lines and uh, they're here actually and we are acclimatizing them it's not beneficial for them to be just placed here with a different uh, temperature water temperature but you will see that this goldfish are really very big they're huge and my intention is to get some uh, lines from here. We will crossbreed because they're all orandas. Only that this uh, red white orandas are really big. So in the future we can expect to you know produce more big goldfish that can compete in the international market. And I'm so happy for this because our effort to you know make this business more profitable it's been doing good so far we have so many breeds already we have so many you know a fry of this goldfish and even this japanese koi and we are actually doing much effort to produce boxes for our mollies and even for other cichlid type of fish and this is gonna be an exciting thing to watch in this channel and I hope that you will continue to stick around because this gonna, there's going to be more excitement as we go along with this life's journey. color is green but this is not dirty because this is very exposed to sunlight that's why we have the UV light here we will in the future um, let you see how we're gonna spawn the eggs of this one we will also reveal to you in details how we're gonna take care of the fry and I always mention about the mud pond but the mud pond is uh, not actually just uh, taken as it is we have so many preparations as well before we're gonna release our baby fish in the mud pan so this is it and we are hoping and very positive about our future uh, business with this materials In our last video, we actually made a comparison which is profitable business, the duck farm or the quail farm. Well, both are actually profitable. I said that if you have that big capital, you go for the ducks and if you don't have this uh, capital, you go for the quail farm. This will actually give you some income. But there is one thing that I can introduce to you if you are not into quail or ducks uh, business. 
you might as well also engage in the breeding of this uh, tropical or ornamental fish because this is more profitable, more lucrative than the ducks and the quails. Why? Because though you will not earn that big uh, income like the quails and the ducks, you will not also spend much capital. So if you are going to total everything, it will come out that this breeding of this tropical fish is actually more profitable and very easy to operate. This is the reason why I shifted a little bit of our focus and we are now putting more concentration on this uh, breeding of this uh, ornamental fish. And I hope guys that you will still continue to like and share our videos. And uh, I would like to thank you all for always being there for me and always following our, our videos. And more secrets, more, you know, some good vibes we're gonna share in our next video. And I would like to see you in our next upload. Only here at Dexter's World.